Our Food is a project that explores how dialogue can bring change to the food system. We created opportunities for people to explore their food knowledge. People compared and contrasted food from different sources. Crisps. We worked with actors and researchers to prepare a play to share knowledge in a public creative space. Yeah, I'm not so healthy. <laughs> Open events across the North East brought people together to discuss particular concerns. There were opportunities to share accounts of how family meals have changed since the Second World War. And everybody was obviously slimmer in the 50s because it was all home cooked. We created safe spaces where researchers from different backgrounds could explore food issues in new ways. The starting point was to ask our advisory group to identify their concerns. If you look at the world as a whole today, there are nearly 1,000 million people who don't have enough to eat, and there are 1,500 million people who are overweight or obese. If we think about food production and consumption as being to provide us with or improve our or maintain and improve our health, then it's really working against that. We perhaps need to produce our food in a more sustainable way, but actually we need to distribute it better. I think I hope that the project will help people in a community with their own concerns to, to get engaged more in thinking about where food fits and what the concerns they have about food. To have some then interactions between the people who currently do research in the hope that they're trying to benefit people for the future, but may not be doing or addressing the kind of questions that people at the community level have. Because I think a lot of the, the, the conflict that's coming around food is because people don't actually understand each other's positions about it. With it being a cold day, we thought a nice hot, something hot like a hot pot or something like that would be uh, nice. So we've got a couple of varieties um, in case somebody didn't like anything. Um, it's like having a meal in one really, wasn't it? Yeah. And making sure that you had a bit of veg but with meat and 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 it looked uh -huh. um, yeah. pleasing and, and one nice. Pot, one yeah. pot, one pot, and it's yeah. Yeah. much easier. Mixed to veg as well, so uh -huh. doesn't take any putting together. One of the things about Britain is we're the first industrialised nation, so in its generations since there was someone in their family who grew food. For a lot of people in urban areas, food just comes from somewhere else, doesn't it? It comes in the supermarket, it, it's uh, often ready packaged, it's covered in plastic, you don't realise it's grown in soil and carrots should be dirty, you know, when they come out of the ground, all that kind of stuff. So what do we know about the food that we've bought? We've seen the nice pictures on the box, but what do we actually know about what's inside those boxes? Uh, modified maize, starch and preservatives. And the crumble is just the flour, sugar, margarine and emery. It doesn't see anything at all, as far as I can see, about um, <coughs> where it come from, except that it is produced and packed in the UK for Iceland foods. The ingredients are hot pot sauce is 52%, sliced potatoes is 30%, cooked chicken is 10%. Mm, that's quite small. That's quite small. mean. <laughs> and carrot to 8%. So, a lot of sauce. <laughs> a lot of sauce. <laughs> a lot of sauce and uh, not so much chicken. And the, hot, the sauce contains lots Everything. of things. Yeah. But I don't water know is the main ingredient. Water is the main ingredient. Mm. What does food mean to me? Um, home, love, warmth, family round the table. Thanks, ma'am, that was lovely. Happy days. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, well, I've got two boys, so I need to buy a lot of it. I know that much because they're always hungry. Um, I know I do treat them and maybe, you know, reward them with food now and again, which my mum's always telling us off for, so maybe I feel a little bit guilty about that. Uh, food. It's great. Uh, yeah, I don't really think about it. It gives you energy. Food. 
It's uh, picking it off the tree or, or the bush or digging it up out of the ground, cleaning it off, cutting it up, eating it fresh. Lovely. And it's sharing it with friends and family. We're here for a taster session yeah. on the Our Food Project, which is a community-led food research project. I think that food research can be seen as very much a, a scientifically dominated area. It can be seen as very much tied up with the interests of large businesses that are involved in food systems. So I think that getting alternative perspectives into food research and informing the questions that are actually asked in the first place can only be a, a, a really positive thing. I think it's worse, isn't it? Because we have more waste and we don't eat as much fresh stuff as what we used to years ago. And I think nobody sits down together like they did years ago for their food. So at this end, we have my dad. The only problem is you've got to squeeze past each other. She's dad. And then, over there, we've got my mum in the kitchen. Try to get all the vegetables ready and come at the same time. And then we've got my brother. Yep. That's my brother, Tim. Tim's eight and I'm ten. I mean, we've, we've come together um, to, and have chosen some food quite quickly. It was a, a very whistle-stop tour around Iceland um, and we, we didn't spend a lot of time thinking what we would get. And it was a, a quick, oh, pot food is a good idea, it's easy to put just a few things together um, and, and it was amazingly cheap. Well, our, our expectations, I don't think, were fulfilled from the um, the advertisement on the on the box. Um, I think it looks nicer on the box than the one what it actually was. But then, like I say, everything always does. Um, the of the two, well, the cottage pie was probably the the nicer of the two. Um, the chicken hot pot was eatable, but that's probably because we don't like to waste anything than we did would you eat it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't uneatable. Um, but of the two, I think you're probably getting more value for money with the cottage pie than the, um, than the chicken hot pot. I think we've, we have often used, so you talk to a retailer and they'll define a problem. We use those as a proxy for the, for the public because the retailer always says, we only sell what the public wants. I'm not 100% convinced by that. Um, so I think it is actually worth talking to people to actually define what the what the the food system is we you know we we, we should have. Well there's lots of big issues around food. I think people people are eating the wrong types of food, there's the issues of health. People are wanting to grow their own food but they, maybe they don't have the resources. I don't go to the supermarket because I grow mine and I can tell you where it all began. Now, once a year, same time every year, my family would pack us into the car, we'd drive into the countryside, we'd drive up this lane, we'd park on the verge, we'd get out of the car, and there would be this enormous bramble bush. Now, you're my dad and you've got gloves on. You're picking the brambles. Ma'am, you've got the basket, you're holding it, you're being filled up there. Now you, you're over here. You're on your knees. You're a dog. <laughs> Called Sophie. <laughs> if we look at in economic terms, if we really internalised the, the true costs, the wider impacts of food production, we would find that, that sustainably produced foods, such as organic foods or ecological foods, are cheaper to produce. In general, uh, you can say that um, the intensification has uh, increased our reliance uh, on non-renewable inputs in agriculture. So whereas a hundred years ago, uh, we didn't need any uh, diesel on the farms, we didn't need any mineral fertilizers on the farm, hardly any of the farmers here uh, use pesticides, but nowadays uh, we are completely dependent on them. Kitchen wisdom! Kitchen wisdom! 
want to impress with a romantic meal for two. You know she likes lasagna. Four minutes in the microwave. <laughs> no! no! Cook fresh! Impress! Costs less. Kitchen wisdom! It's a chicken. Oh, it's a big oh, one. Wow. Look at that. What a size. Yes. So we know exactly where it's come from. Yeah. Then. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. it's so what we decided to do this week was to go to the other end of the scale um, and try and try and source everything that was fresh. All the veg and everything's come from allotments and stuff like that, homegrown. Obviously, it's fresher and a lot tastier. Yeah. I mean, they say, you know, people buy convenience foods um, because it's, it's cheaper. Well, it's, it's not always that case, no. is it? Uh, growing the food, taking it out and then peel it and cooking it and then eating it. It's so lovely. Mm. Waste. I grow more and more on my allotment and I have got to find a way to supply more and more people. I don't have any issues with food. I mean, all right, I work a lot, so I buy a lot of ready meals, but I always check my labelling. I pride myself in that. All around the world, historically, great cuisines developed around what was available to grow locally and what you could access. And they were largely plant-based diets, usually supplemented by some other form of proteins, meats, fishes, um, pulses some kind. We have a diet now that is much more based on highly processed food and refined foods, fats, sugars. Um, we've got a much higher fat intake, a larger intake of uh, animal products and dairy products. And what we've seen over a period is that these all, consuming the wrong balance of this causes problems for us as individuals and communities. So we've got a lot more people who have problems from diabetes, from heart disease, which are partly related to the diets that we can see. The chicken just melts any There's no the comparison really, is there, you know, to what we had last week. Except it was called the same thing. <laughs> um, chicken hot pot was gorgeous. I really liked it. The chicken was um, uh, juicy and had lots of texture and kind of melted in your mouth. Um, and there was lots of it. Young parents with children at school would have just, will go for the quickness, go for some, they will not read, they will not travel, they'll not have cars and all that to travel all around to different places to get the, um, the best chicken or, or the best homemade uh, fruit and veg and things like that. And I think the majority of people will be like that. Yeah, if you've got money, or, or and you've got a car, and you've got the time, the older people, yes, yes, I would think they are now start thinking about what is good for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit late for some of us, but they think, <laughs> I think that's yeah. what, I think a lot of older ones will be starting to think of things like that. The council have increased the rent on the allotments. They've tripled it. So now I'm more determined than ever to supply more and more people with what I grow. So, I think I will be going to the community centre and asking them if they'll give me a table in which I can display what I have and the people can buy it. My two boys on a Saturday really love burger and chips. I found out recently that they're mostly horse meat. My children rely on me to feed them, and I rely on the supermarkets. I mean, I always took pride in checking my labels. No fat, there's no bloody beef in it. The future for food, if we don't get our act together within the next 30 years, the next generation, already the next generation, will have serious problems. You know, another food scandal that already been 
um, the mad cow disease. And so there was this commission into the future of farming. So you had a sort of... A um, we need to link what we produce to what our nutritional needs are. So if we've got a lot of stuff that's high fat, high sugar, etc., and diets that aren't good for us, and we're, when we're, we're setting up the the tax regimes, the incentives that makes that the cheapest stuff to produce as opposed to maybe fruits, vegetables, other things like that, then um, maybe we have to rethink that. And that's what we're looking there is sufficiency. Because uh, really with food, all you need is enough. Uh, can you guys tell us about what's changed? Mm. Well, the community centre said yes. So on a Wednesday, once a month, they give me a stall, I can take my produce there and I can display it and people come into the community centre and they buy it. Not only that, but on that Wednesday lunchtime, there's a group of people who make soup. When those actors stayed in character for the next day and and people could could question them and they, they did a really good job, but it was, it was real theatre as opposed to, to drama. The food processors and the retailers should be honest and care regulations about the are only people. good if people stick to regulations so it does that um, we've, we've got enough food to feed people at the moment um, it's it's our distribution system so it's the food system rather than the food production that's that's the big big issue we need to understand our own we have our own personal sort of diet as it were uh, but within the broader framework of, of, of of healthy food and you know there's a lot of evidence now um, showing uh, uh, the detrimental impacts of, in, of consuming sort of pesticides even at very low levels. You know, there is uh, and, and there is monitoring by the pesticide safety directorate in this country of pesticide levels and it's done as random samples they go into supermarkets pull, th pull stuff off the shelf. Where the dialogue needs to come in is um, what we do about it and how we do something about it. That's, that's the most important thing. There is obviously vested industrial interest in keeping the status quo. So the only way that academia can get the public engaged is by informing it and making it push the politicians to change something. That's, that's my personal feeling about it. But we're not doing that very efficiently at the moment. That's why I'm supporting initiatives like the one um, you're doing at the moment. In our year-long investigation, we learnt that everyone has expertise and knowledge of food. We developed a way for scientists and local people to have a dialogue. This has the potential to change our discredited food system. Now we are exploring how our approach can be extended to other communities and food scientists.